Hello YouTube, welcome back to the Not Even French channel. I hope that this video finds you guys doing safe and well wherever you are. So today's video is going to be about the French words that you're probably mispronouncing as an English speaker. And I've wanted to make this video ever since I moved back to New Zealand and have seen native English speakers using French words in their day to day that they're not pronouncing correctly. And that's totally fine that, you know, some French words have been anglicized and that kind of thing. But in saying that, native English speakers do have a tendency to kind of drop in French words here and there to kind of elevate the conversation sans, 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 sans. or come across as a little bit more cultured or whatever it is and so if you're going to be doing that you might as well be pronouncing the words correctly right? I'm sure you know what I mean, like the words getting thrown around like c'est la vie or it was a double entendre. For whatever reason, the French language seems to come across as a bit more cultured or a bit more intelligent or whatever it is. And we do like to name drop those words here and there. What is quite interesting though, fun fact, is that the French language has so greatly influenced English and the evolution of the English language over time that there's an estimate 10,000 French words in the English language of which about 7,000 are being used regularly day to day in modern times. So if you are a fan of language, the French language, and making sure that you're pronouncing French words correctly, then you're absolutely in the right place for today's video. But before we jump in, just a public announcement that the Lingoda Sprint is back. Now, if you guys know me, you know my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of Lingoda and the Lingoda Sprint. It's actually a language learning challenge that gets you to conversational and boosts your fluency in the fastest way possible in a period of three months. It's super intense, but you actually have the opportunity to get your cash back. I know it sounds too good to be true, but honestly, it's not. I've done it. Subscribers have done it. They've absolutely loved it. Essentially, you sign up for your sprint, you attend your classes, and you get a 100% cashback. If you don't know already, Lingoda is actually the number one trusted European language school. And because they operate online, they're incredibly affordable as well. So even if you miss a class and you don't complete the sprint, the classes work out to around 10 euros for a group class. So they're incredibly affordable for having access to those native professors and that completely flexible schedule of being able to book classes whenever suits you. So how does it work? Basically, the sprint is starting on April April 28th 2021 and you have until April 16th to sign up. You can either do the super sprint which is 30 classes per month for three months and you can get up to a 100% cashback or the sprint which is 15 classes per month for three months and you can get up to a 50% cashback. You can do the sprint in French, English, Business English, German or Spanish and essentially you sign up you secure your place by paying a 49 euro deposit and then you'll get charged monthly from there. If you attend your classes and qualify for the cashback you will of course be refunded the deposit as part of your refund as well. So all you have to do is click the link in my description box down below it will bring you to this landing page where you will be able to read through all about the sprint and select which sprint you would like to do this time round. And as a bonus for you, you can use the code CHANGE52. It's my personal code. It's gonna give you the equivalent of 10 euros or about 12 US dollars off your deposit as well. So enjoy. Spots in the sprint are limited and they always fill up. So don't hesitate. If you wanna learn more, check out Lingoda over on Instagram, read about the tens of thousands of happy students who have completed the sprints and otherwise guys enjoy your sprint and happy language learning. So let's get started with this word which is of course what you say to someone before you start eating a meal. So they pronounce the T at the end, bon appetit. Now in the French language you wouldn't pronounce the T so it's bon appetit, bon appetit which of course means have a good meal, literally good appetite. The next word that I wanted to call out is this one and it's said by a lot of English speakers, connoisseur. So you've really got this connoisseur, like the sewer kind of ending to the word. If you're wanting to pronounce it correctly, even for an English speaker with an English accent, you're still going to want to say connoisseur, connoisseur. It's not sewer, it's sir. Oh, I agree, he's such a connoisseur when it comes to wine and cheese. The next word is this one, and I find it hard to pronounce it incorrectly now because I've only said it about a hundred thousand times in my life, but I've heard this pronounced buku, as in B-O-O-K-O-O. -O -O. Specifically, when I hear people say the phrase, well, they would say buku bucks which means a lot of money. Oh yeah, that cost beaucoup bucks. But if you've studied French, you'll know that this word is pronounced 
beaucoup, beaucoup. So even when using this made up expression, it's gonna be beaucoup bucks. Oh yeah, that bag cost her beaucoup bucks. Now this word is an essential word to know for any sort of high school, college movie that you're watching based in the US. We hear this word a lot. So you often hear it pronounced click. Like, oh yeah, she's in the popular girl's click. Now this click word of course means a group of people with shared interests or traits or behaviors. But the correct pronunciation of this word is in fact click. As in, oh yeah, she's part of the nerdy girl's click. Now this word has developed unusual pronunciation, I think exclusively in the US. And this word here is actually meant to be pronounced niche. Now a niche is an area of focus. So for example, my career niche is human resources and I've really niched down to focus on ambitious millennials in their 20s and 30s, for example. It's also a term that's used a lot in marketing. So what's your niche? My niche is busy, overworked new mums who want to integrate more yoga and Pilates back into their life. Maybe that's a fitness instructor speaking, right? So that would be their niche. In the US, I have heard this pronounced niche, and there's even a saying, the riches are in the niches. That's a marketing saying, which means the, the more narrow your target audience or consumer group, the better. But it's absolutely meant to be pronounced niche. Now going from the US pronouncing things a little bit funny to slightly closer to home, which is the Australians, I've noticed, pronounce this word a little bit funny. And by the way, in the Anglo-Saxon world, we actually use this word differently to its original meaning. I think most Anglo-Saxons would pronounce this résumé, which is more or less correct, résumé, résumé. In French, a résumé actually means sort of the summary or let's say the abstract of a document or a book or a paper or something like that. And of course we use it when we're talking about what the French call their CV. So we also use the word CV in New Zealand, but in Australia they use this word resume, in the US they use the word resume, and I'm pretty sure in Canada as well. And it's to describe obviously that one two-pager marketing pitch about you as a professional that you use when you apply for a job. Now I have heard Australians only pronounce this word with a bit of the j in there. So it's like his resume. That's what I noticed when I was checking out her resume. Well, do you want to send me your resume? And I was like, what? Like it's this real j kind of sound. Resume, resume. Now I don't know where this came from exactly, but in French it's definitely pronounced résumé. So it's just meant to be résumé. Now this word to describe, you know, the end of a street where there's a roundabout and you turn around and have to go back out because there's no exit. We call this in English usually a cul-de-sac. And it's got this really like coal, like, oh, down the cul-de-sac. Yeah, I'll have to turn around. There's a cul-de-sac down here. Now, the French pronunciation of this word is you actually wouldn't even, I mean, firstly, the C-U-L. You don't pronounce the L on this word, which actually means bottom or ass in slang, actually. And it's got this, like the, the French U, like the U, that native English speakers find really hard to say. So even instead of cul-de-sac, you just say coup de sac, you're gonna be much better off and much closer to the native pronunciation of this word. It actually translates literally to ass of the bag. Next we have this word, which to be fair, we've kind of adapted the meaning of it. So this word means strong in French, whereas in English, of course, it means something that you're really good at. So it means a strength, but applied. So you would say, oh, you know, the piano, that's really, he's found his forte. That's really his forte. Oh, public speaking is very much her forte. But in French, this word is simply pronounced fort. Elle est forte, comme elle est forte. This word that we have stolen from French, we like to say, obviously, as English speakers, genre. Genre. It has a real ra at the end. But in French, you wouldn't make that jump. It's simply Jean. Jean. And obviously it requires a little bit of a nasal thing going on there, which we don't tend to like in the English speaking world. But that is the correct pronunciation. Jean. Now this word I have heard pronounced across every English speaking population and it's often said lingerie, 
lingerie. It's a very harsh word, really, for something so delicate and sexy, apparently. Lingerie. In French, the correct pronunciation is lingerie. Lingerie. And speaking of this, this brand, although I'm pretty sure it's from the UK, it just has a French name. But this brand is not called Agent Provocateur. It would actually be pronounced Agent Provocateur. Even if you still say agent, at least say Agent Provocateur. Now this saying here is obviously when you're talking about people who have more so new money and maybe they're not very classy or they don't have great taste. You know, they've got a lot of money, but it doesn't mean that they have the things that come with being rich and cultivated and all of those kinds of things. And I've heard this pronounced Novo Riche. The Novo Riche. Now in terms of the French pronunciation, this is actually Nouveau Riche. Like, oh, did you see their new interior design? It's very Nouveau Riche. Now this phrase I have mentioned on my channel before, a lot of English speakers pronounce it like ooh la la, like ooh la la, ooh la la, that kind of thing. It's very much rather like surprise, like ooh la la, or frustration, like oh la la. But it's very much more so o oh, than ooh. Now this word we use in English exactly like the French, which means without, but we often pronounce all of the letters. Go figure. So for example, the four of us went for a walk sans Martha. But for the French, they wouldn't pronounce that final S, and it's very much a more nasally kind of sound, and it sounds like sans. Like the four of us went for a walk sans Martha. That would be the correct pronunciation. Now this word we have absolutely borrowed from French and we know it, but for whatever reason, we tend to say it with a W. So for example, I ice the cake, I put some sprinkles on the top and voila! This is very much a V sound, even if it seems a little bit light in the V or like there's a little bit of breath coming through, but it's very much like voila, voila. You wouldn't necessarily be like voila, but voila. Voila. I can see how it sounds maybe like a W, but it's definitely, definitely, definitely a V. Now this delicious item, do we even need to say it? You know, a lot of us will say croissant. I would like a ham and cheese croissant, please, which is, by the way, not okay in France. We have them here in New Zealand stuffed with like ham and cheese and tomato and made savory, and that's just really not seen in France. They're still very much sweet. Anyway, the correct pronunciation is very much croissant. Croissant. Can I please have a croissant? And just a bonus one, this one is pronounced pain au chocolat, not pain au chocolate. Now this French word, which means goodbye and often goodbye forever, it's a very serious word. I have heard English native speakers pronounce a do, and we, you know, we bid a do, or it's, let's say a do or something, and it's very much adieu, adieu. So you would say the parts of that word, adieu, adieu. Now, even French people get this wrong, by the way, but this word we would say as native English speakers as carousel. It has very much a s sound in there. So because there's just the one S and not the two, it's technically meant to be pronounced carousel, carousel. But we've been saying it carousel this whole time. This phrase, a reason for being, is not pronounced raison d'être, but raison d'être, raison d'être. Just try not to do the big jump at the end of the être. Even if you just say raison d'être, you'll be much closer to the original than by anglicizing it with the d'être. Now this, which you spray on your body, ch -ch -ch, is not eau de toilette, it is eau de toilette. Twa, like T-W-A, eau de toilette. This lovely saying is not joy de vivre, but joie. Imagine it like J-W-A, joie de vivre. Again, it's not a vivre, it's vivre. So, joie de vivre, joie de vivre. Now, this word here translates literally into English as rotten pot. And it's actually meant to be something really nice. It's obviously the dried flowers and bits and pieces often coming in sachets that we put in our drawers to keep them smelling nice and that kind of thing. And we would say pot pourri. And in French, you don't pronounce the T on the pot. So it sounds more like potpourri, potpourri. Now this word you will recognize is something that we say when someone is very innovative or advanced in their fields, like, like usually in the creative fields, like a musician or a writer, some sort of artist, poet, that kind of thing. And we would say avant-garde, but in French you're getting the theme now, you wouldn't pronounce the T at the end of avant. 
so it's actually avant-garde avant-garde. Cool guys, so I hope you found this video fun. If you have any ideas or requests for French language learning videos whatsoever, just let me know in the comments down below. I'll definitely be checking those out. And otherwise, I'll see you here next week on the Not Even French channel. A bientôt!